All right, guys, welcome back to the Type RA restoration, part number eight here. Make sure you like and subscribe. I'm gonna jump right into it with some prep work and show you how we've brought it up to this point. So I'll show you guys what exactly I'm doing in this first stage here. So all I'm really doing is spraying guide coat on the panels and then I'm going over with a block and looking for any blemishes I may have missed. The guide coat is relatively straightforward. You spray it on, then you sand with a block to find low spots or high spots. So you can see right there that little dark spot and see how it's there's no guide coat left there so this is actually a little tiny dip uh, one that is bad enough that i will have to fill up here i found a little scratch that might come out with actually sanding this because this does have a couple coats of filler primer and then again right there so that is a little high spot which may sand away in the uh, process here because how I do it is 400 with a block and then 800 in the end to get it nice and slick after I am satisfied with the bodywork. That's basically it. That's all I've been doing through all the panels. These doors, I do have to paint the jam as well. No bodywork is needed in the jam, so all I have to actually do is just sand up the whole jam to get my paint and clear to stick. For something like this, even though you can barely feel it, this little guy down here, I am going to use some body filler there. Spot putty isn't really appropriate for something that size. And then last but not least, the guide coat doesn't really help with these. That is a little stone chip. That is a little stone chip. That is a little stone chip. These may sand out in the blocking process. If not, they are okay to use spot putty on and resume. Now on to the prep of the underside of the door. So this is relatively painless. Uh, we'll remove the hinges. This is silicone there to keep them watertight in the hole. You gotta get silicone away if you're gonna paint. Then we gotta clean up all this grime and get this all scuffed up so that our new coating will stick to it. But this is not too bad to do. Typically I'll go over it with brake cleaner first, get stuff like all that tar off the edge. And then I'll go over it again with a uh, Scotch-Brite pad. Take these off. These are pretty complex to sand. They're kind of unusual. Uh, but yeah, I'll also clean them, sand them, prepare them for paint.
first thing I wanted to paint because it will hold up stuff later is the uh, front and rear bumper beams, which they're in uh, really good condition. This one was actually just bought new because mine was kind of bent. And then the uh, fog light brackets. So these go behind the bumper, but they're pretty, uh, pretty rough. I mean, it's just like flaking paint. So yeah, these, I'm just going to do them in a single stage black. They don't really have any rust to be concerned about. So all I've really got to do is scuff them up. At the same time, I'll end up doing the mirrors with these as well. Now with the bumper beams all scuffed up, I'm actually going to shoot these in some epoxy and then go straight to paint on those. Got the fog light brackets all sandblasted, so epoxy and straight to paint with them. This little guy, I almost forgot about, this is the fuel door. I had to buy a new fuel door. Originally the car came with a plastic one, and when I was first like washing the car, pressure washing it, it just like exploded the plastic cap. So I'm gonna prep this. Then I'm gonna throw the trunk into the booth as well, just for some epoxies so that I can get the underside of the trunk, which is relatively all blue still. camera died there finishing up my uh, black here. So we got the mirrors done. Uh, we got the front bumper beam, the fog light brackets that go behind the bumper, and then the rear bumper beam. Alrighty, here we are on the last door to prepare. And then I can move the doors and the fenders into the paint booth. Here we go, we got the last door all prepped. So I know, yes, there's some burn throughs and I don't know if you can see that little tiny dot, that spot putty from a chip, another one there, there, etc. an assortment of them. Uh, before I paint these, I'm going to be spraying them with uh, an epoxy sealer. So that will take care of sealing all that up and give me a nice foundation to lay my paint on. This is the last piece on the car that I was preparing for paint. Everything else is done, so that is very exciting. I can clean up all my uh, dust on the floor. How much sandpaper did I use to do this entire car? From what you've seen, I used this much. That is a lot. That's um, probably a hundred something dollars worth of sandpaper right there. So yeah, here we go. Here we are, all set up in the booth. Everything is prepared for the sealer primer. Again, I'm just dealing with the uh, cold environment here, warming up my chems. There we go. So yeah, quite a few chems today. We're gonna do an epoxy sealer primer first, then our base coat, and then on to clear coat. So I'll take you guys along for the ride.
our next day. The pieces are looking good. I am happy with them. The finish turned out really great. So of course I'm happy with that. Uh, base coat, again, you know, I put lots of effort in to make sure I didn't get anything that was gonna be stuck under my base coat and then clear coat over it. So again, not working in a completely professional environment here. Uh, you know, I did get the odd nib here and there in the clear coat, but that's nothing that I'm concerned about because those can be removed easily. Hopefully that's, that is a little nib. I don't think you can see that. So again, dealing with the uh, temperatures, you know, getting to like 15 degrees and lower while spraying. Then in between during my flash, I would kick on the heaters to try and warm it up a bit. But this time, rather than just leaving the pieces in here overnight for it to drop down to, you know, zero degrees, right now it's 10 because I already warmed it up. Uh, I put this little tiny heater guy and it kept it at 10 degrees all night, which is, you know, not ideal, but at least uh, much better than it going to like zero degrees and essentially freezing these. So yeah, painting in the winter is definitely a challenge. Yeah, I am really enjoying that new clear coat gun. It lays down really nice. It's a super slow gun, so it's really easy for novice to uh, to use. Back here in the assembly area, so these are like the upper door kind of seals, bumpers, whatever you want to call them. So they go along here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put those on because then that will give me the ability to actually attach a lot more of the interior panels. Next thing I want to do is the rear window has some kind of purpley tint on it. I'd like to remove that before I put the parcel shelf in. It's a little too dark for me. None of the other windows are tinted. If I was to tint this, I'd do something like, you know, 35% so it's kind of subtle. I'm ready to put this piece in, which is the last of the, you know, the kick plates. Uh, so I have that one. This one, the clips go into the square holes. These circles originally used to have a little circle piece of tape on them. So I'm gonna have to kind of improvise there. I have already flooded the rocker with cavity wax. So I mean, I've done my preventative. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use some tin tape. It's really durable, you know, resistant to most anything. side door trim here so what I'm working with it looks like at one point the black paint on this was topped up so you can see there like it's almost like a run reaction there's some bubbles there's a run uh, needless to say it does not look good so what I've got to do to make this look good is get all these um, ridges and blemishes feathered out nice and smooth
car door is pretty much all assembled. I think I'm ready to put on the door skins. So they might look kind of clean, but I already blew them off with air. They are quite dirty, muddy. So I'll give them a good cleanse and we can slap them on the car. milestone that I want to hit to kind of end this video. So what I'm doing now before the back seats go back in, this is like some speaker box carpet. The original stuff was destroyed. So what I'm going to do now, I've kind of got a drape there. I'm going to trace around the edges, cut it into shape. Just Christmas tree clips like how it went in originally. All right, there we are with the seat back cover. It turned out super sweet, really Actually easy to do. I mean, there's a bazillion holes in the back of the cars, so you can just, you know, go around and uh, pop in clips as you go. Then that makes it so now you can't see the orange foam from the backrest through the trunk. There we go. Looks sweet, really happy with that. Now I can put in my back seats. Well, I've hit my milestone I wanted to with this part of the build. We've got the doors on, the doors are all assembled. We've got a lot of the trim on. We've got some interior stuff. Very excited to see it at this point. This has definitely been a mission. I think currently now I'm around 570 hours into this. And what I'm going to do next, and to keep you guys in maximum suspense for how this turns out, I'm now going to do all the rear end stuff. So I'm going to paint all the stuff, put it on, uh, finish my trunk harness, get my trunk interior all in, my tail lights in, and then the final vid, we will move on to the front. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the progress on this one, and I'm sure we are all looking forward to the progress on the next one. And I think we'll wrap it up with one more video after that. I do have some stuff to do under the car still, like put on the cat back. Now that I have the heat shield on and the rest of the bracketry back there, I can actually do that. It's very exciting. All right, guys, till the next one. It's looking pretty sweet.